that I'm going to tie is the pebble bead stone fly nymph. This was one of the first flies that I tied with glass beads because the beads are larger and it was easier at that time to get my start on the larger, larger beads on the larger size hooks. And the pattern fishes very well and not only does it resemble the stonefly nymph, but it can also be suggestive to a small crayfish. In comparison to other type patterns, this particular stonefly nymph has actually outfished some of the standard stonefly patterns. The materials of, the, of this pattern for the tail, we have a pair of brown goose bites, some brown dubbing for the butt, four large root beer or brown pearl glass beads. The wing case is mottled turkey quill. The legs are barred brown chickaboo. And the thorax is brown dubbing. And underneath that is our about seven or eight wraps of .030 lead. That's optional. I like to add lead to this fly to help get down to the bottom. And when I'm fishing two flies, I put this on the dropper and put the smaller fly at the end of the tippet. And the antennae are a pair of brown rubber legs. Let's break this down with the tying steps now. The hook Again is a Daiichi 1270 size 4 and I'm going to flatten the barb mainly because it just makes it easier to slip the beads on and before I put the beads on this time I need to put a yarn foundation on the hook so because these larger beads have uh, larger openings and they're a little little more loose on the hook shank. So the yarn is going to help fill that gap. Now you could do the bead lock technique on this, but I, I, I don't think that it uh, secures the beads on the hook as firm as having a foundation. So I've got some brown yarn. I like to use the same color yarn as the bead. And this has several strands. Well, I take off, tease off one strand of the yarn to put on the hook for the foundation. And notice that I put the uh, short tagging of the yarn facing towards the back of the hook. I want to get a start fairly close to the bend of the hook. and trim off the uh, excess because I need to slip that bead over. Okay, we'll bring the thread forward. Now when you wrap your yarn forward, don't wrap back over itself, but wrap ahead of it. And you just need to cover the area that's going to be consisting of the body you don't need to wrap all the way forward to the thorax. Lock that in. Several tight wraps of thread. And we'll trim off the excess yarn. Whip finish the thread. And trim that off. Now we're ready to put the beads on the hook. The nice thing about working with the larger beads is that you can actually thread these on by hand as opposed to needing the bead picker tool. We're going to slide on four beads. Now occasionally you're going to get some beads that don't fit. And what I do is set that, those bead, that bead aside and start a collection of, of beads that have smaller holes and just use them on smaller size hooks. So if I wanted to tie this fly again on say a size 6 or a size 8 hook, I would use those beads with a smaller holes. 
Okay, I have four beads on there now. Now we're ready to reattach the thread and start the fly. I'm going to come back to the end back here to do the tail. A pair of brown goose bites. You want the heavier goose bites. And now I, I like to pair them up in such that they, they sort of bend to one side and I like to uh, face the goose bites so that they actually they actually uh, split apart from each other to form the forked tail otherwise known as the Circe. Put the uh, goose bites to one side, each side of the hook, so that they're actually off to the side. And you can manipulate the goose bites and then however you want them to, to lie, or if you want more split, sort of split them apart. Okay, and add a good base of thread. Now we're ready push the speed back a little bit. There we go. Probably almost a full bead width between the goose bites and the first bead. Add a little bit of dubbing to uh, mask the thread and also to keep the, the beads from slipping back. But if you want to, you can always just build up the thread base and skip the, this uh, dubbing as I've all also caught plenty of fish without having the dumbing back here, but it makes for nice cosmetics of the fly. Okay, now I'm going to do the half hitches here. Again, uh, this is where the half the uh, whip finishing tool uh, won't work too well, and you'll need to you need to learn that uh, whip finishing technique with your fingers. Okay, the tail is now complete on the fly. And now we move to the beginning, the front of the fly, to finish the rest of it. So if you're already an, an advanced fly tire and you're used to tying nymph patterns, from here out it's the same as your other standard nymph patterns. We're going to tie, use uh, some weight on this. This is .030 lead. I'm going to bring the thread back here. I'm going to put it over here on the materials clip. Let the bobbin hang out of my way, and I'm going to work off this spool of lead. And I'm catching the end of the lead with my index finger and trapping it down so I can start the wraps. Because if, if you don't trap that, this will move, and then the lead will spiral around the hook shank, and you don't want it to do that. This way it will keep it tight. You get three wraps on there, and then you can, you can push that tag in down and also push, push those lead wraps back towards the beads again. So you can see that I have uh, tight wraps and it's flush against the beads. Now let's wrap a few more times. Okay, let's see. I'll go one more. Oh, that's good. That's about, so two-thirds of the front of the thorax. If you feel comfortable with going further, you can go ahead and, and do that. Now we're going to Secure those lead wraps with multiple, now, with multiple thread wraps. On a stationary vise, you can do this. The other option to this rotary vise, another example, is just to hold the thread and spin the rotary vise around on its axis. And that's easy, too. And you can put multiple thread wraps on there, and that keeps that, that lead from spinning around the hook. Okay, now we're going to put the antennae on. The antennae with the rubber leg should be about the length of the hook shank. So I'm just going to double it over and cut off the other end of the rubber legs and lay it over the top of the hook. Okay, and you get, when you get it secure on top of the hook, pull the rubber band back stretch it taut, and then wrap it on top. This will firmly seat the rubber legs uh, on top of the hook so that it, it, it's not loose under there. Okay, so now we're ready to 
use the model turkey quill for the wing case. Now, when you have turkey quill, the first thing you should do is to coat this with uh, some lacquer or head cement, fly tying head cement. What I like to use is the uh, Sally Hansen's hard as nails finish. And this works really well and it's relatively inexpensive. And coat the, the quill and let it dry. And now it'll, it'll be more residual to breaking apart when you use it on your fly pattern. So I'm going to cut a section of quill out of here. Just push it through and peel it right out. I'm going to face it so the dull side is actually facing up and the shiny side is on the other side. Shiny side, dull side. I'm going to trim off the, the lower part of this quill a little more so it's not quite as thick. I'm going to gently roll my thread over the top of it. See, I want the, the quill to surround the top of the thorax. Okay, now we're going to secure it. And I'm going to make sure that I get plenty of wraps just to so that the, uh, th the last thread wrap is in front of the first bead. I'm going to add a little bit of dubbing for the thorax. Again, twisting in one direction only. Making sure that that's fairly tight wraps because when I pull, again, when I pull that over, I want that, that quill to be flush against the bead because otherwise, if it isn't, you'll see the lead wraps underneath, which cosmetically is not appealing, but uh, if you still catch, I don't think the fish mind. Add just a little more dubbing on here. Okay, now I'm ready to add the legs. And for the legs, I like to use uh, Chickaboo, which is a feather product uh, that was developed and originated by Henry Hoffman, the well-renowned uh, uh, Hoffman Super Grizzly man. Select a nice... Uh, the reason why I like to use, use the Chickaboo is because the feathers are real, the hackle fibers are supple and uh, soft and they add a lot of movement to the fly. So I'm going to strip off the extra fluff at the base. As a side note, the Chickaboo patches offer a lot of uses for many, many different types of wet flies, which is one of the reasons why I like, I like using uh, the Chickaboo. So I'm going to attach this feather right at the, uh, in front of that dubbing and trap the stem with the thread. Now again, the feather has a shiny side and a dull side. So I want the shiny side forward, which is the usual way of, of wrapping hackle for a wet fly. I have the stem here. I'm going to trap this stem. I'm going to pull the stem back and double it over. That just will ensure me that it's not coming out of there. Okay, and take the thread back to the feather and finish off the thorax area with some more dubbing. And you can just gob it on here. You want to build uh, the thorax once needs to be or should be slightly larger than the, the body. We'll roll that on there. Again, I'm just using a little bit of dubbing at a time just to make it easier to work with. Okay, I'm going to grab my hackle pliers here. And basically, you need about three turns. I'm going to have to come out a little more on the tip of my feather so I can get around that third time. Okay. And bring the hackle pliers forward and the thread underneath the tip of the feather 
to trap that tip. Trim off the excess of that feather. Okay, so we have the legs palmered around the thorax. Now we're ready to pull the wing case over, and I just like to split the legs of the hackle apart a little bit where I'm going to pull over the wing case. Pull the wing case down and bring the thread around the top of it. Okay. Just kind of push those hackle fibers down a little bit. Now I'm going to, to keep the, uh, the hackle fibers from ending up in the finishing of the fly, I'm going to grasp these index finger and the thumb. They're good little tools because they can pull those things out of your way. And now you don't have any hackle fibers fouling you up when you go to whip finish your thread or tie off the head. And then rather than just cut off, the, 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 the quill now to make a nice and take a chance of having the tips of that quill and the eye of the hook where I, and then I have problems getting a leader through. I'm going to just pull this wing case back over, double it over and tie it again and it makes a nice little head on there. Okay, so now I can trim that off flush and it's not going anywhere. It won't come undone. Okay, I'm ready to whip finish. Trim off the thread. That pretty much completes the fly. One last step is optional. We can uh, trim off a little bit of the hackle fibers underneath. As you well know, insects only have six legs. So if we want to get this a little more realistic, we can trim off some of those extra. The silhouette of these legs uh, tied this way actually add to the fly as it's drifting through the water because you're fishing this in a dead drift manner in, in the nymphing style, traditional dead drift nymphing. And uh, so it really adds to the overall bugginess of the fly. And that pretty much completes the fly. And you can tie this in black and uh, use grizzly hackle for the lakes and black goose bites and black rubber leg and tinny. Again, just go to a different color if you're looking for a different species representation. There's a lot of ways you can do this.